my name is Ben Goldscheider. I'm a French horn player. I'm currently in Berlin um, on a tour with Daniel Barenboim and the West East and the Band Orchestra. So we are traveling to Cologne tomorrow to play in the Cologne Philharmonie. We are then going to Luzerne to play at the festival, Salzburg at the festival, and then back to Berlin to play in the Waldbühne, a kind of 15 or 16,000 seater auditorium in the middle of the forest. Um, and then I'll shortly go to a uh, small festival up in Yorkshire in England, which is a very beautiful festival, the North York Moors, and then a chamber music prom uh, with my dear colleagues of the Kaleidoscope Chamber Collective. So a busy couple of weeks um, coming up. Uh, it's been uh, entrusted to me to talk a little bit about this instrument, the French horn. Um, I think one of the most amazing things about this instrument, apart from the fact that it's very beautiful, is that it has an extraordinarily large range, and I'll try and demonstrate that a little bit now. We can go as low as this. But also as high as this. All with basically a different setting uh, of the lips, which is called the embouchure. Um, now, it's got basically only two parts. You've got the mouthpiece, which kind of transforms a buzz of the lips. And puts it in such a way that then it makes a sound on the horn. Um, you, you hold it with two hands. I'll sit back a bit. Um, the, main, the main function of the right hand inside the bell is actually to hold probably about 70 or 80 percent of the weight it'd be very very difficult to hold the horn with just one hand because you'd get very tense in the left arm so you you hold the horn here with the right hand and basically you want to think about continuing the line here so the hand kind of goes in like that and then of course you hold it uh, and have the, the fingers on on the valves here um, you can play basic scales to begin with something like but you can also do kind of funny things like if you close off the right hand completely you can totally change the sound from something open like this to something closed and you get this kind of very brassy sound um, you can also do crazy things like play and sing at the same time and that sounds a bit like this Of course, you can also play very, very beautiful tunes as well. Um, and so on. Um, I love this instrument because it's extremely versatile. It's got music written from it for the Renaissance period, really. It kind of it, it was a hunting instrument to begin with, and it kind of entered art music through a back door uh, in a hunting role in, in kind of early Baroque opera right until the present day. So there's a huge range of things that you can play. I think it has a very beautiful sound. Um, and it's, as Robert Schumann said, the soul of the orchestra. So it occupies also a very, very important role inside the orchestra. Mm -hmm.